Hello lovely people, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to go through this week so I'm just going to dive into it. So, the main part of this video is going to be a bit of a haul, largely ebooks. Um, but just before that, I just wanted to announce that I'm going to do a Q&A and giveaway. <laughs> I'm really nervous about it. Essentially, when I, in my little checking in video where I was like, oh, I'd like to do something to celebrate 500 subscribers, um, the idea of a Q&A had some vaguely positive feedback. Um, I'm still mildly terrified that just no one's going to ask me any questions. So I thought, I um, essentially, I'm taking a leaf out of Cat at Bruise and Reviews book because I saw that she did this and I was like, yes, that's a really lovely thing to do. Um, I'm going to do a Q&A and I'm also going to do a giveaway. So, rules. Essentially, if you submit a question for the Q&A, then you will be automatically entered into a giveaway. I'm going to give away a, up to £15 worth of a book. Um, if you are in the UK, I'm going to hopefully try and order it from like an independent retailer to try and support independent bookshops during this moment. But um, if you're international, then I think I can do it through Book Depository. You'd have to be comfortable giving me your address details, but I very much promise that I will only use them to send you a free book. Um, you get to pick the book, up to 15 quid's worth of book, um, and I think that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, run this for two weeks to give time for people to give questions in, and then in about two weeks' time, um, I'm gonna record the video. I'll put like a date below, like a rough date of when I'm planning to record it, so you know like whether you can still submit questions or not. But um, yes, I just thought that would be really nice because I wanted to do something to be like, hey, lovely to have more of you here, because it is really nice to have more of you here in a way that is also like giving something back to you guys. So yes, if you would like to, you can leave me a question down below, or you can uh, reply to the tweet of this video on Twitter, and then, um, yeah, I'll do the questions and I'll pick the winner out of like a hat or something, if I can find a hat. <laughs> but yes, I am like really, really nervous about it because I don't know whether like anyone's interested or if, you know, anyone cares or whatever, so I don't know. It would be really nice if you could leave a question and then I'll do all that later, but yes. Um, we're gonna, that's about it. <laughs> We're gonna move on to the main body of this video now, which is, this is a haul, as the title says. Essentially, I have two physical books to just briefly cover, and then I realised, I bought some ebooks the other day, um, and then I realised that I've never hauled my ebooks in any of my hauls, I've just, like, forgotten that I've bought things. So, um, I'm gonna go through some ebooks that I've required, like, within the last like six months to a year. I don't buy ebooks very often. Um, so yeah. And any ebooks that are like classics or that have entered public domain, I haven't purchased, I've got from Project Gutenberg, which is like an entirely legal, but um, when books enter the public domain, sometimes people transcribe them and you can download them for free for Project Gutenberg. So just shouting that out. Okay, I'm gonna stop faffing. I feel like I've got myself really like <laughs> nervous. So I'm just going to dive into it. So, the um, two physical books that I have, one of these will not be a surprise if you watched my stay at home book tag video. This is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I've been talking for a while about how I want to read it. Um, Bryony at the Indecisive Readers is doing like a read along kind of thing. So like from now until like the end of August, you can read it at your own pace, but there's like a Discord chat where you can chat about it and all these lovely things. So that was sort of the kick up the bum I needed to actually get this. And I bought it from Griffin Books, which is a really lovely independent bookshop in Panath. Um, I just thought I'd shout it out in case anyone in the UK is like, I want to order books and support an indie bookshop. Griffin Books is good. Um, so yes, I'm really excited for this. I know that this is a retelling of St George and the Dragon. Um, I think it has aspects from, I want to say, Chinese mythology weaved through it. That might be incorrect because I haven't read it yet. But I know that this is one that is doing the rounds a little bit on booktube at the moment. I know it's a little bit of a chunky beast, but I'm kind of like really excited to sink my teeth into like a really proper, um, hopefully full of really cool world building, like interesting fantasy. So I'm really excited for that. And that is one that I, by the time this goes live, I'm probably already reading. Um, the other book that I have is The Remainder by Alia Trabuco Zaran. This is the final book that I've got through the Queer Book Box. I've cancelled my Queer Book Box subscription largely because I don't need a new book every month at the moment. I'm trying to just um, get through the books that I own. I might pick it back up again at a later point, but I was like, £10 a month going out 
when I already have so many books is something that I don't really need right now. This is set in Chile and it focuses on three children of ex-militants who were sort of involved in like some revolutionary stuff. The three kids sort of are on like a road trip together and that sort of thing. I don't really know anything more of it than that, but it sounds really interesting and not like anything else that I've really read before, so I will be interested to see what it's like. Okay, moving on. All of the rest of these books are ebooks, which are on my little Kindle here. Hello, Kindle. Hello. <laughs> I'm also sorry if I don't pronounce some of these correctly, starting with this one, which is Eugene Ongine? Onjin? I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, but it's by Alexander Pushkin. I've always meant to read some Pushkin. I know that he's an incredibly famous Russian writer. This novel is entirely in verse. It's set in Russia in the 1820s. I know there's a figure in it which Pushkin considered, like, um, very much based on himself, which should be interesting. So it follows a couple of characters, um, their relationships with women. I, I don't really know a huge amount more than that, but it's sort of, like, going to be a glimpse into, like, 1820s Russian sort of, like, I think, courtly life? I don't 100% know but I just it's one that I've always meant to check out because I've always wanted to read Pushkin and I'm just kind of gonna see what it's like. Next up is a book which is essentially on my to read list because of booktube that's Radio Silence by Alice Osman. I've heard a lot of good things about Alice Osman especially from people like Cece at Problems of a Book Nerd stuff like that I know that it's um she's a writer who is quite beloved on this channel all I know about this is that it follows a character called Francis who has always been just focused on studying and keeping some sort of secret about herself and I believe that through this book something about like the her secret is threatened to be exposed or something I don't know what that secret is I know that Alice Osman usually writes stuff that is to do with LGBTQ plus storylines and stuff like that I don't know if this book itself is drawing on anything like that but I've heard good things you probably know more than I do at this stage after that I have two books by Alyssa Cole. Um, the first one of these is A Princess in Theory. I believe that this is sort of like riffing off of um, like Prince and the Pauper like fairy tale because our main character is a woman, she's just like living her life, doing her thing, and then there's this guy who is prince of some country and he needs to find like his one true love or whatever. He tracks down her. I think she mistakes him for being like a normal person, like okay, the pauper side of the story. Um, and then like a romance ensues type thing. The other Alyssa Cole book I have is Once Ghosted Twice Shy, which is a female female romance, which I think is kind of a sequel to this book. I think it's someone who is um, the prince's, I don't know if it's bodyguard, I don't know if it's like PA, I don't know, working for the prince who f started to have a romance with this girl, um, disappeared because of her duties to do with the prince and is now back and they're now trying to sort of like I guess see if the romance will work again I don't know but every now and then I'm in the mood for like a really fun little romance book and these these seemed like they would be a lot of fun so I'm hoping to give them a shot soon and I'm hoping that there'll be like a new little like romance phase for me. Next up is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary this is one that has been um, majorly doing well in the last year or so I know it's about um, two people who to save money um, are sharing a flat except for um, they essentially share the same room so one of them does night shifts so they have the bed in the day and one of them works in the day so they have the bed at night um, and they are communicating with each other through like notes and stuff like that um, I have a couple of friends who've read this who really liked it I bought it because it's my work book club's book of the month um, so I'm gonna just give it a go see how it's how I like it. I know that it has been like really well regarded generally. Um, after that is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I mentioned previously in my Dewey's On um, wrap up that I had to leave my Diana Wynne-Jones other book, Black Maria, I had to leave it at work and I don't know when I'm going to get it back because I'm not in office at all. Um, but Howl's Moving Castle is one of the most famous of her works. I know that it is quite different to the Ghibli movie and that it's very much rooted in like Welsh mythology, which is something I'm very interested in. Um, and I just, I feel like Diana Wynne-Jones is such a beloved author that I'm really excited to sort of experience her for myself and see what I think of her. Um, after that is uh, The Blazing World by Margaret Cavendish. Margaret Cavendish was like a sensation in the 17th century. She was like Duchess of something, I don't remember. This book is kind of, um, it's on my radar because it's like a feminist classic, I think. I'm just going to read you the little bit from Goodreads because this is sort of what made me, when I saw it was available on Project Gutenberg, I was like, let's give it a go. So 
So it says, um, part utopian fiction, part feminist text, it tells of a lady shipwrecked on the blazing world where she is made empress and uses her power to ensure that it is free of war, religious division and unfair sexual discrimination. I'm just so interested to see what like a 17th century woman's view on that is. I just think it's going to be really interesting. I'm hoping that Margaret Cavendish is going to be like a wonderful figure who I will really enjoy exploring. We'll see. Maybe it will be of its time. I don't know, but it sounded incredibly intriguing. Um, after that is Elizabeth and Her German Garden by Elizabeth von Arnhem. Um, I read uh, The Enchanted April recently by Elizabeth von Arnhem and I really liked it. I think this one is just Elizabeth von Arnhem like wandering around her garden and telling you about it, but I'm quite into nature writing at the moment, so that just sounds absolutely delightful. Um, after that is Make Room, Make Room by Harry Harrison. This is a science fiction classic which my dad recommended to me ages ago when I was doing the Term Infinity Readathon and I bought it and then I didn't actually read it for that. Um, it's kind of like about a futuristic version of um, this really packed city and it's, it's like a cynical New York detective who is existing in this absolutely overpopulated, overpacked city where like um, discrimination, corruption, rioting, that sort of stuff is rife and he's trying to like search for something like some kind of like hidden conspiracy or like truth or something I don't know but it is um, according to my dad it's like a real classic piece of like um, science fiction so I thought I'd give it a go see what it's like um, then is Blood Queen by a Joanna Courtney. This book I am interested in, but I also picked up this book because my friend is now represented by the same literary agent as this author, and so I just thought it would be interesting to read something that this literary agent, literary agent has been involved in the creation of. So um, Blood Queen is based on Macbeth. Um, I don't know if it's the, looking at the Shakespeare or the original, like, what Shakespeare based Macbeth on, but it's like Cora Macduff is the main character. She um, is excited to marry Macbeth. Something goes wrong that means that that's no longer possible, and then she's sort of, like, seeking revenge type thing, is my understanding. It sounds like it's going to be quite a fun, like, dark historical fiction-y type thing, but I'm just, I'm, I'm super intrigued to see what it's like. Moving on, we have another classic, that is Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. Um, this is a classic piece of vampire fiction. Personally, Carmilla is on my radar because of the um, YouTube series retelling of it that is absolutely fantastic and which very much explicitly takes like what is like the kind of implied but also kind of very much there um, romantic slash erotic relationship between the two women in it and um, sort of just like makes it very much canon and I absolutely love the retelling so I thought it would be interesting to read the original um, I know that it is about a vampire called Carmilla um, who may or may not be trying to seduce a woman I don't really know what the original is like I just know what the, t what the YouTube adaptation is like so I thought it would be interesting to read like some classic gothic vampire fiction and just like see what that's like um, after that is The Palace of Curiosities by Rosie Garland. I bought this a very long time ago. Um, this is sort of um, based around a circus. I think I've been going off of books that are based around circuses, so I feel like maybe I should just either give it a while and read it later, even though I've had it for a while, or just read it and see if I can rekindle some interest in circuses. But this is about two people who are sort of cast out of society for varying reasons, and then they end up joining this circus and um, that sort of thing. I don't know, I think that circus stories sometimes have like a bit of like oof to them for me, and I'm just I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see. It depends how it's handled, I think. The next book is another booktube favourite, and that's The Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. This is one that I've heard a lot of good things about, especially in like the YA fantasy type world. I know that it's based on a fantasy world that is based on ancient Rome. I know that there's a, a female character who is sort of a, a slave and a male character who's a soldier, but very reluctantly, I think somehow they're going to be combining to like sort of try and overthrow this world slash make a change, that sort of thing. Um, all I really know is that a lot of people have said a lot of really good things about it on booktube, so I'm going to be interested to see. I know that it's part of a long series and a couple of people have not liked how the series itself has played out. I'm going to sort of have to like go with it and see what it's like. Um, after that is Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. Um, I bought this book because I'm going to be doing a podcast episode on it. My, I have a podcast, there's a link in the description below with my friend. Um, we sort of take it in terms to pick things that we are really enjoying and then um, get the other person to experience them and talk about them, that sort of thing. Um, it's, this was his pick, so I have actually started reading this already and I'm really enjoying it. I know that I've said that short story collections are not always my cup of tea. This is science fiction that seems to be um, very much leaning on the science side of science fiction. Like, I haven't read a lot of it yet, but it does seem to be very based on, like, actual scientific 
um, you know, taking a start point and then seeing like, oh, what if like this was what happened, that sort of thing. So I'm really intrigued. So far, there's a lot of interesting ideas. Also, this particular collection has the short story that the film Arrival is based off of. And I found Arrival very interesting, especially to do with like the side of like linguistics and that sort of thing. Again, very much rooted in like some practical um, scientific slash that sort of thing, like knowledge. So um, yeah, I'm very interested to see what this is like. I'm not normally a big short story collection person, but I think that this might be one that I really enjoy. The next one is another one that I'm really worried that I'm going to butcher the name of, but that's um, Mademoiselle de Maupin by uh, Théophile Gautier. Gautier? Gautier. <laughs> <laughs> She's not very good at French. Um, there's just a very small description of this on Goodreads, but it was really intriguing. So, a woman uses her incredible beauty to captivate both Dalbert, a young poet, and disguised as a man, his mistress, Rosette. In this shocking tale of sexual deception, Gauthier draws readers into the bedrooms and boudoirs of a French chateau in a compelling exploration of desire and sexual intrigue and gives voice to a longing which is larger in scope, namely the wish for completeness in oneself. I think this is on my radar because there is some interesting, um... LGBTQ plus themes going on here with both like gender and then like same sex attraction and stuff like that. Whether or not those are gonna be done in a way that is by modern standards considered well done, I don't know, but I'm fairly certain I read about this book in a different, um, might have been Homintern, can't remember, but I think that's why it's on my radar. And again, saw it was on Project Gutenberg, thought I would go for it, see what it is like. It is always interesting to see um, portrayals of those sorts of things, even if, like, by our modern standards, they might not be, like, quite using language or whatever that we now are more comfortable with, but I don't know. Um, I just think it sounds quite interesting, so we'll see what that one's like. Penultimate book is Aisha at Last by Uzma Jalaladin. This is a modern day Muslim pride and pro pride and romance? Pride and prejudice romance. <laughs> what is my mouth doing today? Um, which I just thought sounded really I just thought this sounded really interesting. Aisha like dreams of being a poet, but due to like financial issues she has to be a teacher. She lives with her massive family. And then she meets this guy called Khaled who is is can you imagine from a Mr. Darcy figure? Seems a bit cold and judgmental. Maybe there's a bit more going on under the surface. I love Pride and Prejudice. I've consumed a lot of like Pride and Prejudice adaptations on film, but I realised the other day that I haven't actually read a lot of Pride and Prejudice retellings, so I was like, let's change that. So I'm hoping this is going to be like absolutely delightful, wonderful, that sort of thing. Um, the final book is one that I won't talk about very much because I've mentioned it before, but that's Les Mis by Victor Hugo. It's a book that intimidates me, but yet I constantly feel drawn towards to read. One day will I get there. It's a bit of a beast. I know that he has a tendency to just describe everything with lots and lots of detail, but one day I'll get there. <laughs> Those are all the books I wanted to talk about this week. As per usual, I would love to hear any of your thoughts on any of these. Have you read any of them? Do any of them sound really interesting to you? That sort of thing. If you would like to ask me a question and enter the giveaway competition, please feel free to leave a comment about that down below or contact me on Twitter in reply to this video, thread, thing, I don't know. Um, yes, it would be very nice if there was some kind of questions asked so that I do not have to just never mention it again out of embarrassment. We'll see. Yes, I hope you're having the loveliest of days. I will see you next time for something different.